Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Nancy, and here are my partners, Chris and Leo. We are from McGill University, and we are all studying neuroscience. We are here today to present to you our research proposal in combating glioblastoma with the combination of two relatively new technologies, nanoparticles and um, RNA interfer interference. So first of all, to begin, we should look at potential prognosis factors before looking at any treatment options. In our case study, um, the patient, Jacques, has a glioblastoma, but we do not know which type it is. So glioblastomas may have multiple types and their mode of actions may vary from one to another. Therefore, it's important to understand the molecular and genetic profile uh, that the tumor has. Second of all, the location of the tumor is quite important as well because, uh, because of the possibility of recurrence after surgical treatment. Uh, in this case, the tumor is crushing the lateral ventricle, so it is an ideal position to the subventricular zone, a milieu that is rich in neural um, cell progenitors, Therefore, um, there is a bit of um, um, understanding that there's a correlation between the subventricular zone and the time to progression of um, glioblastoma um, in this case. So with these elements in mind, here are the main limitations that we are looking at to overcome glioblastoma. Uh, as I mentioned, the molecular and genetic profile is quite important. Uh, there are many types, and um, a general treatment may not have the same response from one tumor to another. For example, the mutation in isocitrate dehydrogenase is a common uh, prognosis factor. Uh, then um, when the enzyme is mutated, you have actually a better prognosis than when it is a wild type. Then after that, we have the blood-brain barrier which is a physical restriction for drug delivery. The endothelial cells lining the blood vessels have very tight junctions that restrict the passage of macromole uh, macromolecular agents. Therefore, uh, if you want like, to make a potent drug, it is often very big, and it would not be able to cross the blood-brain barrier. Here, just to mention, this is a real mice um, capillary, so you can see the... Um, aquaporins in, um, in green and um, the endothelial cells in magenta, which is stained by the nucleus. Then even if you have a drug that can cross the blood-brain barrier, there is always a possibility of recurrence of the tumor because of drug tolerance. So studies have investigated the profound effects of timozolomide and um, the drug tolerance uh, due to some uh, alterations in um, epigenetic factors. So I will give my pointer to, to Leo. So today's clinical trials, they usually focus on one factor, whether that be an oncogene or a tumor suppression, su suppressor gene. However, we know that glioblastoma uh, patients have a wide array of molecular profiles and thus require a specific treatment for each one. So we believe that RNAi, uh, RNAi technology is the way to go because it has made significant process in the last 10 years. Um, there, but there still needs to be a lot of work done, especially in humans, to, to really ratify this as a viable way to treat glioblastoma. Um, with the, the problems that Nancy has mentioned, there are also other problems such as renal filtering when administered through the blood and also siRNA degradation due to endogenous enzymes. Thus, this proposal aims to show you that um, RNA technology is valuable when combined with nano, uh, nanoparticle technology. So the reason why we select RNA technology is because we believe the, um, the treatment would be, uh, would be adjustable and also non-invasive. So blanket treatments such as temozolomide are uh, problematic. In, uh, for example, some of the researchers before me talked about um, temozolomide being only effective when the MGMT promoter is uh, methylated and therefore inactive. RNAi technology can overcome this by first of all efficiently screening and then targeting abnormal gene expression. Miller et al. published a paper in Nature uh, showing that they are able to manipulate chromatin regulators 
inducing uh, short hairpin RNAs to target MNR mRNAs that were overexpressed, uh, thus extending the life, the survival of the mouse model. Also, Davis et al. also published a paper in Nature that showed that they're able to target sRNAs uh, specifically um, in, in, in mouse models to, to, uh, to tumor environments and also specific tissue types. The same group also showed that these nanoparticles are small enough to cross the blood-brain barrier. And in this case, they used uh, transferrin ligands attached to these nanoparticles so that endocytosis of these particles can, be, can occur close to the cancer cells. Following from all this, we hypothesized that siRNA conjugated nanoparticle delivery system will improve progression-free survival of patients and as well as uh, enable for a specific and non-invasive NIST treatment of the glioblastoma. So in order to apply this technique, we're going to first perform real-time qPCR on major biomarkers in, or in order to identify those. And then we're going to um, perform 5 prime race technique in order to uh, create those corresponding sRNAs. We're going to select three, um, SRN, uh, three patient spe spe specific oncogenes, and then we're going to also uh, construct an sRNA for Bickel um, 2 like 12 gene in order to enhance apoptosis in these tumor cells. And then we're going to introduce, an, introduce these sRNA in a nanoparticle, and these nanoparticles would be conjugated with a human transferrin receptor, which is known to be highly expressed in glioblastomas. And then we'll be uh, administrating these nanoparticles intravenously through the carotid artery. And then we'll use FDG PET imaging to observe the tumor, tumor volume. So we hypothesize that there will be a decrease in size of this tum tumor, and then we'll, we also think that this will improve the progression-free survival of patients. So these new technologies are rapidly evolving, and this takes, uh, makes place for uh, opportunities to optimize the delivery process, as well as to diversify the gene targets of the therapy. Um, gene therapy in itself is becoming more and more um, experimented on and becoming more widely accepted um, for treatments in the medical field. Thank you very much.